In next series of modules, we will be talking about tissue replacement. When we talk about tissue replacement, the first thing comes to mind is some high-tech technology which is going to be used to replace dead or damaged tissue. I will tell you that tissue replacement is a natural phenomenon actually. Bones, for example, regenerate every 10 years. Skin regenerates every two weeks. Macrophages scavenge senescent RBCs about 100 billion a day. I mentioned that in my one of my previous lectures. Also, you may have noticed that when people get hurt, in response to minor injury, our tissues regenerate. For example, when people get little cuts or bruises, for example, during a shave when people get cut, that injury generally heals without leaving much of a scar. All organs have a limited ability to regenerate. People have a very limited ability to regenerate, but if we look at some other organisms, they have a remarkable ability to regenerate. For example, newts and salamanders, they can even regenerate a lost limb. So I would like to show you an animation which shows the process at a cellular level, how these creatures are able to regenerate their limb. Okay, so here's a newt limb. This limb has been amputated you can see there's a little nub here. We'll see what it is at the cellular level. But first of all, I want to show you that this limb is going to grow back. So let's start. So here you can see how it is changing. This is time lapse photography. That little nub basically grew into a whole limb, which is fully functional for the snoot. So now let's look at what happens at the cellular level. Here is our newt. It can move its arm. It has the parts we are showing here are basically the skin, muscle and the cartilage or the bone. So let's cut the arm of this model animal. So here the arm has been cut. The first thing that happens is that there's going to be a scar formation and that little nub that we saw in the actual animation, that basically nub is also called blastema. We look at it closer, more closely what happens there. So the scar is going to heal and that our little nub is going to form and this nub is going to grow. So again the anatomy here, if you see this, this is green, green is depicting the skin, white is depicting the bone and cartilage and the red is basically depicting the muscle. So as soon as soon this limb is cut off, the cells start streaming. There's a storm of cells which accumulates at the site of injury and you can see these little balls, they are representing cells of different lineages, white representing bone or cartilage cells, the red representing the muscle cells, and the green the skin cells. So these cells are going to accumulate and form that little nub or the blastema, that's where our actual time lapse imaging started. So let's continue. These cells are going to grow. The remarkable thing about these cells is these cells have a memory they know what they are supposed to do, how many times they are supposed to divide and what structures they are going to form. So here is the cells dividing and also as they divide, the number grows, not only the number grows, but also these cells are differentiating into specific tissue. For example, the red cells are forming muscles, the white, the bone on the cartilage and the green, the skin tissue. So this is a feat that these animals can perform, we don't. So how can we use the, our information about how animals regenerate and how cells can make more copies of themselves and differentiate? How can we use these type of information to help people who have lost some part of their tissue? So we saw how amphibians, the, in particular newts, are able to regenerate a lost limb. Remarkable feat. Unfortunately, we cannot do that and we pay a price for that. I'll show you some statistics. Every 30 seconds, a person dies from a disease that can be treated with tissue replacement. So wouldn't it be great if we have the knowledge or technical skills to mimic what these little guys can do? So we are going to talk about different strategies people have been developing to overcome tissue replacement problem. But first let us briefly look at the human intervention history. The first tissue that was transplanted was actually blood. 
And the earliest records that at least I could get my hands on is 1492, Pope Innocent VIII, His Holiness got sick, he was unwell and he was given blood transfusion. There are variable accounts of it, whether he actually drank the blood or whether it was a transfusion. Anyways, the source of blood was three young boys. Unfortunately, not only the Pope died, also the three donors or three young boys also passed away during the process or shortly after that. In 1901, human blood groups were discovered by Austrian scientist Karl Landsteiner. Between 1492 and 1901, several attempts of blood transfusion were made, of course unsuccessfully, most of them, because people did not know about blood grouping at that time. It was in 1901 that Dr. Karl Landsteiner was able to identify the blood groups and after that it became the process of blood transfusion became relatively more safe. I would like to point out that Dr. Karl Steiner received the Nobel Prize for his discovery of blood groups. Additionally, Dr. Landsteiner also was the person who discovered the RH factor. In 1925, the first transfusion center was established by Alexander Bogdanov in Moscow. This was the first center which was storing blood for transfusion purposes. So this is the basically history of blood transfusion as far as far tissue regeneration or tissue replacement is concerned. Now let's look at the, the solid organs, history of solid organ transplant. 1905 cornea was transplanted by Edward Zrim and this is the record of first solid tissue transplant. In 1954, kidney was transplanted by Joseph Murray. Here if you see, look at this photograph, this is the team and the patients. If you notice, these were the two patients, one was the donor, the other was recipient. These are actually, these two boys are identical twins. The reason, because in 1954, immunosuppressants were not discovered. For example, we have talked about cyclosporin, for example. It was not discovered at back then, so it was not possible to transplant tissue between non-identical twins. I assume you have been keeping up with the news of tissue replacement. It has made several headlines. For example, in 1998, there was a hand transplant which occurred in France and also in 2005, a partial face transplant. Several milestones have been achieved since then. I'm going to talk about three different strategies for tissue replacement. Organ repair via stem cells, cytokine induced stem cell proliferation and differentiation, and also in vitro organ and tissue fabrication. So these are the three strategies we will talk about in the subsequent modules.